All right, joining us now, he works at writes for MLB.com. I've talked to him in the past. In fact, I think we talked about a year ago. Did a big, great feature on the legendary career of Joan Joyce. And he's now come out with another softball feature on UCF shortstop Jasmine Williams, the mom bomb. Uh, very good fitting, perfect timing, of course, with Mother we- uh, Mother's Day weekend. Uh, this past has been a great week for Jazz and the UCF. Speak to our good friend, Matt Monaghan. Back with us, get to talk to him again. How you doing? I'm good, man. It's it's great to be back. Great to you know talk to you guys. Talk to you again. Uh, yeah, mom bombs. They're they're. Uh, I love those mom bombs. Hashtag mom bombs. So take me through the process. How you came up with the idea to write about jazz, uh, and, and that process. Obviously, for those that do not, uh, I'll let you explain her story. I know it probably interests you, but just take me through this process of these when you came up with this idea. Yeah, I mean, basically, like we were looking for, you know, it, it was Mother's Day weekend. We were looking for, you know, Mother Mother's Day stories to tell. Um, and she had popped up. She's big on social media. Like she's got a big following um, on Twitter, on Instagram. And I had kind of seen that just in my, you know, timeline come up a, a few times. And I was like, this is this is perfect. Like she's, you know. She's she's a mom. She's balancing that. She's playing Division One softball. She's a star softball player. She's a student. She's married. Um, you know, balancing all these things. And I was like, you know, I'd love to talk to her and 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 you know, get get more you know details on her life and like how how she's how she does it all pretty much a super mom. Um, and so yeah, so that's kind of how I found out about it. And then I. I reached out um, to UCF and then they, they connected me with her pretty quick. So it was great. Did you get to talk to her? How did what? When did you get a chance to talk to her and, and kind of and interview her? Um, I think I spoke to her probably, I mean, Mother's Day was this past Sunday. So I spoke to her on like Tuesday probably um, of that week. Uh, so pretty recent, you know, right before the, the story went up. Um, and yeah, I just talked to her over Zoom um, and her baby was there with her, which was really cool. I mean, it was perfect. I was like, she was behind, the baby was, I think I described in the article, the baby was behind her, you know, sitting down, facing away from the camera when we started. And then the baby's kind of squirming a little bit and she runs over, grabs the baby and the baby's sitting on her lap for the, the rest of the interview. So that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah, and that was the Tuesday, I believe, before the American Conference Championship uh, began in Tampa, Florida. So now was your plan, because um, I didn't know about the article until our mutual friend of ours uh, yes. brought it to my attention, Mr. Brian Murphy, shout out. He hates shout outs, but I'm going to give you it to Murph. him. Murph, yeah. right? <laughs> so, you know, because I'm, I'm in Tampa covering the tournament, and next thing I know, I think it was uh, either, I think it was Friday, he messaged me about jazz, and he was asking me questions. I'm like, well, what's this about? <laughs> and and that, so was your article was published. Uh, on Friday. Was that always the plan? Because she had a big home run in the Thursday game against Memphis. So I wondered, did that influence your article and when it would be released? Or was that always the plan when you had it uh, released? I think that was the plan. I don't think there was like a thing like, oh, she's hit a home run or she's playing in the conference tournament. Uh, You know, I think it was going to be I don't have as much say over when it goes like it's more the edit the editors but I think it was that was the plan to just put it I think it went live Friday night probably late Friday yeah. night yeah. into Saturday um so it was kind of perfect timing because I had seen that she had she had hit a home run so I added that into the into the story and then they ended up winning you know winning the the tournament so it was like even more perfect she had an, another home run I think yeah. in the championship game right yes so, Saturday uh, yeah yeah, so it all it all worked out pretty well for that the Mother's Day weekend. Her her you know having a great weekend. So go for it, Bryson. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't know if you wanted to open it up real quick. So I wanted to ask them what were what were your thoughts on on watching Jazz in the conference room because you already had kind of met her for the first time during that interview and up until that point you know UCF softball of course has brought brought in transfers like Sarah Willis who was coming off that perfect game Chloe Evans has been having one of the best best offensive seasons in the program history and then here's Jasmine Williams where you know she she came in alongside them and then here she is hitting mom bombs in the American Athletic Conference tournament so what was going through your mind when you kind of saw saw her doing what she was doing in the conference tournament because she ended up a pretty key element in their victory. Yeah, I mean, I think she hit the the go ahead 
game winning home run kind of right in the in the semifinals. Uh, and it was great because I I wasn't you know I wasn't tuning into it, but I was on you know I follow you see I, I on Twitter the softball team, and the announcer said mom bombs in the call, so it was like man this is like perfect for the story fits exactly with what what I was writing about. Um, so I immediately, you know, emb embedded that into the, into the article. Um, but yeah, it was amazing to see she's, yeah, she's a kind of like one of the bigger stars, right. On, on that team. And she fits in well. Um, they all seem to love her and love her story, uh, of being this, of being a mom and, you know, playing every day. Uh, you know, it was, it was cool to see it in real time, like as right after I wrote the story, wrote the article and just see her perform on the field, um, yeah, like I said, it was it was pretty perfect for that weekend. What was some of the things you that you took away from talking to her that you you know that really stuck with you? I mean, I, I think uh she's just for how young she is, um, she's so mature uh in the way she talks about life and the way she talks about being a mom uh and playing softball. Um, and I tried to get that across in the story as much as I could, but she had some great, you know, quotes about just, you know. A, you know, a guy has a has a baby, you know, we don't think twice about a guy, you know, having a baby and then playing high school sports or college sports or, you know, professional sports, but a mom, people look at us differently, right? They say, oh, you're a mom. So you're, you're, you know, you're, you can't, you can't go play. You can't go do things like, you know, we're the same. Your moms can go do stuff as, as, as well as dads. Uh, so it's like, you know, kind of, uh, that's something that stuck with me that she's, you know, of course, like, you know, she can, she, she can still play softball. She's still a great softball player. Like this doesn't change anything. She just has a little baby now. So um, yeah, that was a big thing that stuck out to me. Yeah. Played at a very high level, second team all conference and had a great postseason run, uh, obviously to help them win the conference championship. And and that was the thing too. I think the thing that's caught a lot of the players and coach Ball Malone's talked about this is her maturity. Like she's, mm -hmm. you know, Coach Bobone's talked about many times about how she stresses over, you know, she's got three kids and she's got a husband and she's coaching a team. And then she sees how Jazz is handling that from a student standpoint. She's a great student, is a mom and is a wife and is a player. And she's excelling, very cool and calm. How did, what did Jazz tell you about that? How does she balance all that out? Support. I mean, her crazy support from her team you know, at Oregon, when she was at Oregon, but also at UCF uh, from coaches, from teammates, from her husband, um, just having that big support system. And from fans too, I think from, you know, I mean, I know, you know, she's pretty big TikTok on TikTok. Uh, she had those dances that went viral and then every softball team started doing them. I think originally when she had made her announcement of she's pregnant, uh, I think there was some backlash and she talked about that a little bit. You know, people like, oh, you're young, you're having a baby, you know, unfair stuff. Uh, but I think she gets that, that support is there. Now, if you look at her tweets or you look at her Instagram, like people are behind her and as they should be. Um, and I think that's part of the support system, a lot of that stuff. Um, uh, so, yeah, I think it's just like having people at your side, by your side. Um, that's really big for her. And she's able to do what she loves. She's able to play softball and do that and and her husband and her her son are there watching her, which is great. Yeah, they go just about to every game, no matter where it is. Yeah. Uh, and they're usually pretty easy to find. But something that was interesting, again, I encourage people to go to MLB.com uh, to read the article as uh, Jasmine Williams balancing softball stardom and being a mom. You mentioned, she, you know, she mentioned to you how she used to, she would take care of her youngest brother as well, uh, you know, her data or take, you know, she was helped take care of her youngest brother. So talk about that family because she's always been around helping family members. Yeah, I mean, she was the first thing she said too was like she was ready to have, you know, it was she was ready to have a baby. Like it was like, you know, her her mom was a young mom. Um, I think she said her mom was like 19, maybe. Um, and yeah, she had a she she had a little brother, you know, that she helped take care of. You know, she was already 16 years old when her her younger youngest brother was born. So she had experience kind of, you know, taking care of a, a baby, uh, you know, a little bit. And uh, she she told me she loves kids like she's always loved kids um, and she enjoys being around kids. Uh, so it's it's kind of natural for her, even though she's doing all these other things. 
Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I could see it in the zoom, like she brought the, the baby Z right over to her, had her in the lap and didn't miss a beat. I mean, she just kept going on with the interview and talking about things. So it was like, uh, yeah, she's just, you know, the natural born for that, for that, for that role. So. She opened up to you talking about her experience at Oregon and, and how Missy Lombardi kept her involved when she had to take the year off when she was pregnant and, how mm -hmm. she, and, and talking to coach Lombardi, which I think was very open. She was very open. Talk about that a little bit. Cause I think there were a lot of people wondering about that because obviously she ended up transferring to UCF, but just talk about how, what she told you about her time at Oregon there and, and with Missy Lombardi, the head yeah, coach of the Ducks. Right. Yeah. I think, um, you know, she didn't know what to expect from a coach, you know, when you tell them I'm pregnant, because she talked about, you know, she's she's heard of other experiences when, uh, you know, a woman is is pregnant in college or on a college softball team. And they're like, well, we don't you know, you, you're you, you can't play for us anymore or like, you know, something like that. And she didn't feel that at all. I mean, it was like fully embraced. She had a close relationship with her coach, with her teammates. Um, and it was kind of like right away. This is what you know, you've. Obviously, she, I guess, talked about having kids before this, and they knew that she, the Lombardi knew that she would, you know, she'd be a perfect mother and would, you know, embrace this role. Uh, and she kept her involved. Yeah. On Zoom calls. It was also COVID. So, like, I think they didn't there was like it was like a season, almost two seasons off. Um, but, uh, yeah, she kept her very involved and welcomed her right back whenever she wanted to come and play. Uh, you know, and they need, they needed her. She's a great player too. Um, so it was like, you know, very, uh, that was helpful as well. Like that was like very supportive and, you know, of course that's what every, every coach or every team should do is, is, you know, do what Lombardi did and what Oregon did. So you talk about how, how coach Lombardi mentioned that she's ready to be a mother coach ball Malone, of course, herself is a mother of young kids did you get a chance to ever talk with jasmine about kind of that because she and coach ball are kind of in similar position with mo mothers to young kids and they're working together on this ucf team so did you get a chance to go into that i didn't too much i didn't she didn't bring it up that much but she's just said you know they're very supportive uh embracing you know that this you know her being a mother uh it's it's not a huge deal they're there to help out whenever she whenever they can um, but I saw on social media, I've, I know what you're talking about. Like I've seen the, the photos of them together, you know, uh, you know, talking about moms, talking about mom bombs, talking about that stuff um, and being softball moms. So I, I, uh, I definitely, I should have probably gotten more into that, but it was, it was, I de definitely came across that that was, uh, that was, uh, you know, they had a great relationship in that way. She took over a year off from softball uh, and, and to the point where, you know, even, when she came back, she didn't have the year she thought, especially offensively. I think she, the bat was missing. If you look at her numbers at Oregon, when she transferred to UCF, did, did, did she talk about that at all about that coming back to softball? And did she ever even, you know, maybe even think about even maybe not coming back to softball? Because obviously there's a lot of responsibilities that comes obviously with being a mom and everything. I'm wondering if how much did she share with you on that? I had not, I think she always wanted to come back. Like that was her plan. Uh, yeah, offensively, I think it was, is, it was tough, maybe a little rust, um, you know, just not enough practice or, or, um, you know, not in total playing shape, but she, I think she had five RBIs in her first game back, which is pretty crazy. Um, uh, and defensively, I, you know, defensively, she seems like a, st a stud, like a really yeah. good defensive player. I, I just kept seeing, you know, when I was searching, looking for highlights, just these crazy catches, uh, at short, like running all the way to the third baseline and like diving yep. you know, across the line. And she's done it like the same catch, amazing catch, like multiple times. Uh, and I think she had like two errors that year she came back. So, um, but she didn't talk about too much. I mean, she was, she just want, she, de I think definitely wanted to come back and be on the field and play in front of her, her husband and her baby. Um, I think that was like a big uh, goal for her, like throughout that, that break, that process of being off the field. Yeah, because she was an all Pac-12 performer, for those that yeah. didn't know, at Oregon. Great defensive player, which they honored. They have a bunch of defensive awards at the Pac-12. Uh, and I remember when I heard that she was coming here. You know, she had been, she knew Coach Ball Malone from their time at the U.S. national team, the under-19 team. That's where Coach mm -hmm. Ball Malone was an assistant, and Jazz was a big marquee player. I think she scored the game-winning run to win the gold yeah. in that yeah. championship against Japan. And I remember when she came in, that was kind of a big story here at UCF because they had just won a regional – 
uh, and won the conference, had the most historic season ever. And Michaela Macario was the starting shortstop, had a great freshman year, won rookie of the year. So you wonder what was going to happen. You know, they lo- they moved Macario to second base, which it turned out, I found, you know, it was her natural position coming into UCF. She moved to shortstop because of COVID, because Justine Molina was still an extra year. So it wasn't a big deal. But people out of the fans wondered, how is this going to work? And it has been tremendous. Jazz has had maybe arguably one of the best defensive shortstop years any UCF shortstops ever had. Mm. And she has fit in right very well. There's a positive energy that she brings to these teammates that kind of absorb her. And that's kind of you see that on the TikTok, which I know you asked her about. Talk about that energy because you get you probably got a sense of that talking to her didn't you during that time that positivity there that i'm talking about yeah i mean i'm not such a tiktok expert but, yeah, am I. Uh, I, <laughs> so she was kind of teaching me about it but i uh yeah i definitely brought it up with her and asked her about it because it's something i'd seen just reading articles about her um yeah she i think in 2019 she started it and she did that dance that went viral and she started doing it after games or before games uh and yeah, she did talk about it's like a positivity thing. It's um, it's something she looks back on now, like some of the earlier videos. And just it's a it's this time of being a college softball player, of being with your teammates, people you love, you know, and coaches you love. It's like a good way to, you know, see that again and look back on it and and hold on to that memory of, you know, when you're happy and you're dancing and you're playing and like it's uh, she definitely like uh loved. She was a little. She said she was a little shy at first when they were gonna post it on TikTok. She's. She said she's a shy, a little bit of a shy person. But once it went up, she was happy it went up, and people responded well to it and and loved it. So um, yeah, she 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 seems to like that part of of her life too. So one of you know, I, having just graduated from with my journalism from UCF, one of the things I, I've learned is that sometimes you just have to, is there are certain things you can't end up getting into a story? And so I'm very curious, is, is there anything that you talk with Jazz about, either something she said or something you brought up that maybe you weren't able to fit into the story, but you still thought was really interesting? Um, I think I tried to include almost everything from the Zoom. Like everything was great. And I think I tried to fit it all in. I'm trying to think if there was anything uh, that I didn't include. Um, I mean, not really. Like, I think, I think I kind of had, had most of it in there. Uh, Most of the stuff we talked about, Uh, you know, she said she had stuff, um, you know, at the end, we talked about advice for young mothers, any doing anything anywhere. I think I could some of that in there, but I mean, basically, have a huge support system, have people around you that love you and accept you and, uh, you know, will help out. Um, I think it's like, she, she didn't think it's, you know, people sometimes will shun, uh, you know, a, a young mother or she's a young, young person getting pregnant, but, um, she, she was, she's happy to have a baby. And she, she said, you know, just have, have support, have people around you, have, you know, a significant other, have, um, you know, strong family bonds that, that, that will help. And she has more than that. I mean, she has a team of people that, that help her and coaches. Um, and so like, you know, that's, that's something she, she, she talked a little bit about at the end. Um, cause I kind of asked her with mother's day, like, you know, what, any advice you have. So that's, that's probably one of the things that I maybe didn't touch on a, a whole lot in the story. Would you say that that was one of your big takeaways from meeting Jasmine? Because, I mean, as a writer, you know, you meet so many different people. Um, and in, in your case, in the world of, you know, baseball, softball area. So what is the, the you think the biggest impact that Jasmine left on you that, that you'll end up kind of taking with you through the rest of your career? I mean, it's inspiring, right? Like it's like for for, you know, she's pregnant when she was 20 years old. She was in college. She had studies. She had you know, she was a student, she's playing high level D1 softball, a, a starring role on a team. Uh, she was, she got married, she has a husband, uh, and all the other things. She had TikTok, she had a social media presence, she had all these followers, like, and like I talked to her on Zoom and she's very, she's very calm. She's very mature. She's very like, you know, has a handle on things. And like, that's, pretty remarkable to me like to to you know I, I i couldn't even do that at my age like i couldn't do all that now like i'd be totally going my head would be spinning around 
but she she's you know it's kind of cool to see that people can do that mothers can do that uh you know that's that's definitely uh what i took away is that that's that's refreshing and you know that was that was a a big thing that stood out what was it like for you because obviously we're all a bit we have all been in this situation you this is a subject obviously you're interested in you know the article is going to come out but you also know she's playing so ideally you're probably rooting for her to do well right because that makes your story good now you're not expecting her to hit a home run uh, one of the biggest home runs of the season in the bottom of the six to get the lead in a game where if ucf loses they're probably missing the ncaa tournament <laughs> um so take me through your process. You did the interview on Tuesday. You're writing the article. I'm assuming Wednesday and all that. The tournament starts Thursday. Tell me how the, are you are you watching the game? Are you following it on social media? Take me through how you're following her because obviously you know this article is coming. So how she does could in, you know if she does well that could help your article obviously. Yeah, I asked her to hit a home run to make my article. <laughs> Thank better. you for that. She, Thank she, you. She did it. Yeah. So yeah. No, I I. Uh... Yeah, she, I, it was perfect. Like I said, like, it's like, I, I was following along. I wasn't watching the game fully, but I was following on social media. Um, I saw she had a home run on that Thursday. So I put that in the story, you know, cause it went out Friday. Um, and yeah, I was hoping for, cause I knew that they were playing, you know, the, the semi, the finals, you know, that weekend. And I was like, man, I hope they just win the whole thing. And I was checking on it on, I was checking on Saturday, like tr- checking Twitter checking social to see like how they were doing. Cause I was interested. Cause I had a kind of like, you know, connection there already. And uh, they, that they ended up winning was, was perfect. Um, uh, so yeah, I was definitely like, <laughs> I was definitely like checking in and seeing how she, she, how she was doing and like how UCF was doing and it, it all worked out. It's an incredible story. Cause she, I mean, Sarah Willis, their pitcher was obviously the uh, conference play, you know, tournament MVP, but if it wasn't for Sarah Willis, maybe arguably Jasmine Williams was yeah. the second best player that week with her bat. I thought, I mean, swung the bat the best all week, hit the two home runs. She had a home run in the championship game that really helped break the game open for the Knights and was made some incredible double plays. Even in the South it's Florida semifinal, turned those yeah. double plays. They were like, you know, web gym type plays uh, on that. But her story's not done yet. Uh, obviously, they're going to play in the NCAA tournament. They're in Tallahassee to start off, but she also has a year left of eligibility uh, of softball. Had did that she discussed that at all? What's next for her in the future? Whether it be playing next year back at UCF or off the field after she's uh, done with college? Didn't discuss at post softball, but did this did tell me she's coming back next year to UCF. Um, I don't know if that's she's told other people that, but she told me that. Well, we're gonna um, call it breaking news right here, Matthew. We're gonna call it right there. Although, yeah, I, I was told she was coming back. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, I, I'm gonna be paying attention this this uh coming upcoming weekend. See how she does, see how it's this weekend, right? Um, yeah, this weekend at Tallahassee, Friday um, night, there'll be yeah. uh, prime time. Yeah. I'll be I will be uh I will be following along to see how UCF does, how I'll be rooting for her. Well, welcome aboard. Uh on behalf <laughs> uh awesome piece. Uh, once again, uh, check out MLB.com where you can read the article. Tell the audience where they can find your work and as well as the article uh, for those that are interested. A great story with Jasmine Williams, uh, an in-depth uh, feature on her and uh, balancing softball with motherhood there. Uh, just t- tell us where they, for those uh, that would want to f- follow it. Yeah, um, you can follow it. You can find it on MLB.com. Uh, if you Google MLB.com and my and Jazz Williams, you can find the article. Also on Twitter, you can find it. Uh, I've I promoted it um, at it's at Matt Monaghan, um, M-O-N-A-G-A-N. Um, and I will I will pr- probably promote it again at, as long as things, you know, I, when things go well this weekend, uh, I will be I'll be probably tweeting about it again. Hopefully you got plenty of reasons to promote it. And uh, I enjoy our annual visit here. I, this, I keep yes. doing this. Keep posting softball content. <laughs> I'm going to keep getting you on because uh, I, I, I will do my part to help you out, man. Great job as always. Uh, enjoy your work, as you know. Uh, thanks for doing this on a busy schedule and uh, thanks for uh, covering softball for us. Thank you guys. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure.